and welcome. So I'll quickly show you the process that we had to essentially undergo for our goose project, which is the person flying in the plane. So as you can see, we got all of this. So this is our timeline. And with our timeline, you can see he goes through and it spins, right? So there's not much else to this. He, it literally is going around spinning. So I'll bring it a bit closer so you can actually see, but essentially this is what it is. Now, to go a bit more thorough in detail, I will explain a bit more. As you can see, we have our property section here, background renders, scene graph. So don't worry about background renders or scene graph, it's more properties. So you can see all this nonsense everywhere here, which I'll explain shortly. But essentially, we have our curve editor. So everything runs on the curves. But for this, we are mostly going to be focusing on our dope sheet. So if I go to the node graph here, and I go down to our viewer, or maybe not the viewer. So as you can see, every time I click on one, it brings up new features. So the viewer has its own options, Z, ZD focus has its own options so essentially we wanted to start with our read node where we just push tab and we would go read image and bring that in so I don't need to do it right now but as you can see it goes up connects into the curve tool our curve tool comes after we've done our crop so our crop comes in and then our curve tool and after our crop, we go down to shuffle G1 pass. So you can see that I have it as GI, RGBA, and with our node, we have the open bracket, knob in one, close bracket, space, pass. So that renames it to shuffle one G1 pass. Well, GI pass, I mean. Um, it then goes into our pre malt, so our unpre malt which goes into our merge one plus, which as you can see is connected in with grade two, which is connected in with grade one. Now these grades are just to adjust your colors and your focal points and so forth. Now grade one is connected in with some noise. So the noise adds a semi cloud sort of aspect, but you can see on the Z scale 13, well 3.15 but you can see that it rises as we go up so it just keeps moving and that's exactly what we want now it, the unpre malt that's connected into our grade one pass connects into shuffle to light pass so that's where the light comes through we have our shuffle three color pass which of course, RGB functions uh, connect into our unpre malt, which connects into our merge two multiply. But you can see that our merge one is on plus, so you adjust the operation here and it becomes plus, which goes into grade and merge two multiply goes into our merge three plus, which is connected to our unpre malt four, which is connected to a blur two all. Now we only have this connected to our reflective pass. So RFL is reflective. Um, we then have our merge four plus, which is connected to our unpremolt five, which has another blur on a 0 0.7 mix. Um, we also have our specular pass, which is SPC and as we go on our merge five part, merge five plus is connected with our merge four, which is connected in with our unpremolt six, which is connected in with our shuffle six. 
subsurface scattering pass. So if we go all the way back up here, you see the goose connects off and goes up. And as we go down, it goes across a little bit more, goes down and then across and down into our shuffle seven, which happens to also be connected in with our curve tool, which we mentioned earlier. Um, and in our shuffle seven, we have all our settings set out for RGB, RGB A in A. Um, and our pre-malt one is connected in there where we then have a vector blur. So what the vector blur does is essentially creates a sense of blur from specific time frames. And from our vector blur, it goes on to our merge six over. So we want the operation over instead, which connects in with our shuffle eight and our shuffle eight is linked to our shuffle seven which is then linked to our curve tool. So it all co-aligns with each other. Filter, you don't need to worry about this. The shuffle eight image is connected into defocus where you will then press tab again and create a right node. So what the right node does is essentially it will write your file. So you'll go into your file and you will name it whatever you want. In my case, I named it goose.mov and this will essentially create the file type as mov. Codec is adjusted to H.264 with a 24 FPS rate. Our codec profile can either be high or main, depends what you want it as. Keep quality as best and we will click render down here with the input being one to 65 because that is the continuation of this. And then as you can see, it plays like this. But when we go back to it, which I will show you shortly. So not sure if you could see this, but so final product has a little blur that's the point that is the exact point of all of this